How's everyone doing? Good? All right. Welcome, everyone, joining us on AOL.com. Sasha Cohen, how's it going? Great. Thank you so much for having me here today. I know. We're excited. So uh, Sasha and I are friends. All of us Olympians are very close, as you know. No, I'm just kidding. But for some reason, I know a lot of, I know more figure skaters than anyone else. I don't know why that is. We're the most popular. I you don't are. Know. Maybe you are. Maybe you are. So when I was asking Sasha, well, what do you want to talk about today? She's like, just make sure we talk about what I'm doing now. So uh, I thought we should start. You, got, you have a lot of stuff going on now. But first and foremost, you just got married. So let's give it up for Sasha Cohen, another Olympian. I have a picture of her, uh, of her husband right here. He is oh. Dawson from Dawson's Creek. <laughs> Do you ever get that? Isn't that Dawson from Dawson's Creek? Does he ever get that? You know, he gets um, a young Richard Gere. A he, young Richard Gere. Hmm. If you go back and you look at old pictures of uh, Richard Gere, you see it a little bit. But um, yeah, it's been a really busy year. I got married. Uh, I graduated from college. I was inducted into the U.S. Figure Skating Hall of Fame. Um, yeah, give it up, give it up. I'm working my first job out of college, so I'm, you know, figuring out life. Um, first job at 31. I know, it's a little weird, Sorry, 10 years after age. everyone else, um, <laughs> but it's, it's been an amazing year, a lot of, a lot of personal growth. So let's talk about your, uh, your husband and your wedding. So first of all, you guys met at a Harvard Business School party. Is that correct? It was a birthday party um, with HBS alum and okay. a friend. Is, are those wild parties? What kind of, what's, what's a Harvard Business School party like? This one wasn't that crazy. It was um, in Greenwich Village um, in the city. And a friend of mine who went was like, I was single. And she's like, you should come um, be a great selection of guys. Like, this is, this is a good shot for you. So I was like, OK. Like, it's Saturday night. I might as well um, make an effort here. And, um, you know, I showed up, I saw him, he looked a little bit familiar, and, you know, I noticed him out of the corner of my eye, and then an hour later, we were both at the bar getting drinks, and um, we set up a first date, which... Nice. Did I, you pick him up, or did he pick you up? It was kind of like, it's like a mutual conversation. Okay. We, sh we talked for a little bit while we were waiting for a drink, and then it, it kind of turned into, like, well, we should do this again sometime and grab a drink. Um, but after, you know, did you know who you were, or was it like? No, you no. Were like, yeah, um, you know, did you do you say like you're an Olympian right away, or do you just? No, I try to see how long I can get <laughs> with, by avoiding it, and but then usually it's like, well, why are you in college now? <laughs> and then you kind of like, well, I did some other things, or like, well, people are like, what did you do? And then you know, the goose is up. You kind of have to to spill the beans. Um, but no, on our first date, I, I always tease him about this. The date went really well. He's like, I'd love to do this again. And he said he'd be in touch in a few weeks. And I was like, I don't think you say that if it, <laughs> if it went well. And he's like, oh. Um, but anyways, yeah, we just got married in uh, Cape Cod in August. Went on our honeymoon. And we and do have a picture of you, by the way, in the wedding dress. There we go. It looks beautiful. You're really prepared with all these photos. I'm we're like on, nervous. We're on the ball What's here. Next? So you got married in Cape Cod. I did. Um, in did you plan everything? I was reading that. In, I was reading your article in Brides magazine. That you uh, you did a, you did a good wedding. You did a lot of wedding. Oh, planning. was there an article? In yes, yes. We just left right after the uh, <laughs> the weddings. Have no idea what was published. Um, but yeah, it was so much more planning than you would expect. You're like, okay, we're picking out your rentals, and it's like, what water glasses do you want to rent, and like, what forks? And you're like, are these decisions that really need to be made? Um, but it it was amazing. We had the most beautiful weather. It was like a hundred year old, like intimate little venue on the water, and all our family and friends came. So it was just a, it was. And it went by so fast. You know, everyone says enjoy it because it just whirls right by, and it really did. When you guys met, were you like, this is something special right away, or did it, did it take some time? No, it was, it was very quick. Um, within, like, three or four dates, we were together, and then a month later, I moved in, and then wow. three or four months later, Those we were engaged. First dates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it went very quickly. Um, barring the, I'll get in touch in a few weeks. But after that, it went very quickly. <laughs> yeah, in a few weeks, you got you moved yeah, in. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> then after that, it was very quick. So. Do you think it's easier or uh, more difficult to uh, date and marry an Olympian? What do you think? Are we are we more difficult people, or uh, <laughs> what are the what I are the plus minuses on Olympians? I would definitely say we're more difficult people because we just haven't been attuned to the real world. So people that grew up in the real world, they just. They don't get that we Advice, can't relate. If you want to date an things. Olympian, Sasha's giving you the, the hints here. It is. It's like we, you know, for the most part, we were homeschooled for a large, you know, a large portion of our education. Um, we spent our lives singularly focused on one thing at the expense of everything else. Um, we're used to intense pressure, um, building your, you know, your path, your career for something that happens in four years and eight years, um, and so. 
it's, it's just very hard. To, and the other thing is to spectate. I'm, you know, my husband loves to watch football, and I was like, well, I would want to play. You know, I'm used to being out there and, and being the one that's always performing, competing. So the idea of being a spectator is something I'm still getting used to. So he finds that kind of amusing that I don't know how to just yes. relax. And you just graduated from Columbia as well. You graduated in May? I did. I graduated in May, uh, majored in political science. No good Columbia men, I guess. You had to wait for the Harvard guy. Well, they were a little, <laughs> they're a little young, right? Because I went to school 10 years later. Like? <laughs> um, Are you in classes with like 18, 19 year olds? Yeah, you know, some classes I took were grad classes, so I was a little bit older. But, you know, I'd go to school with no makeup on. I look a little bit younger. Um, but I was just. I love that you used a fake name in college. It's not a fake name. Oh, it's your real name, but no one knows you by it. <laughs> my, my legal name is Alexandra, so okay. it's not a fake name. It's not a fake um, name. But no, I loved it. I would go to all my professor's office hours and meet my TAs and do extra reading. And um, another thing my husband thought I was a little crazy for doing, but I loved being at school, and um, it, was, it was an amazing experience for me. And how does it feel like graduating now and, I guess, getting into the real world? Do you feel like now I'm in the real world? You, you, st you, just, you mentioned you just started working when we were Yeah, I started uh, working at uh, Zig, which is a media startup in Brooklyn. I'm the second person there. Um, I've been there since June. And it's, it's interesting. You know, it's real life is a slower pace. You know, you're not training for the Olympics. So it's, it's a little tough to get used to life on a different scale without that sense of, Intensity, so I try to bring. I'm trying. I'm still trying to find. Trying it. to bring the intensity to the um, workplace. Yeah, yeah. Then I just sometimes freak other people out because I'm just too intense. About <laughs> what do everything. you do? What is Sasha Cohen like in the workplace? I think I'm so used to planning. You know, as you plan your Olympic Games and you have like a four-year plan of how you're going to be ready and where you're going to peak. Um, so I think I just bring that to like my life and trying to plan out my life for the next year and. Um, you know, my, my boss or my husband's like, I don't know when that work trip is yet. Or like, we'll schedule, like, we have to focus on one thing at a time. Um, but no, it's, it's good. Generally, my hyper organization skills are a plus. <laughs> I don't know if you're like, so Olympians, we tend to plan our life in like four year cycles. Um, so whenever I'm with Olympians, I'm like, I still do that. So like, I still I'm plan glad. around the summer Olympics, like 2016 just ended. So now I'm like, yeah, you got to put a next four year. Are you like that chunk. too? Are you on the... I, on a four-year cycle. I don't though. do it in Olympic cycles anymore, but I, I still like to to have, like, you know, a one year out. Um, so I'm getting better. What's your gold medal now? What's your goal, gold medal goal here? Um, what's my goal? I want to find something that I can give myself to as intensely as I did with figure skating and have it turn into my next 20-year career. Um, and that's a little bit of a challenge, you know, being in your early 30s, just leaving undergrad, and trying to navigate the workplace at, at an older age and looking for something to give you the same sense of purpose and intensity as training for an Olympic Games did, which people are like, good luck. Um, so it's, it's good. It's exciting. Uh, New York's the perfect city for me. There's so many opportunities. I originally thought I wanted to be in finance. I've kind of shifted more towards media and journalism. Um, so it's, you know, it, there's so much to learn, there's so much to do, so it's, it's all really exciting. Why, it seems like a lot of figure skaters kind of settle in New York City. Why do you think that is? I think maybe <laughs> we're just adrenaline junkies. <laughs> there's a lot to do, um, a lot to see, and I think, you know, we're making up for lost time a little bit. Um, you know, I trained in Connecticut in the middle of the woods. I trained in like Arrowhead in California in the middle of the woods with no people around and just you and the ice rink, so I think, uh, at the age of 26, when I came to New York, I just feel like I'm, I'm making it for lost time. I want to see, um, you know, every new play that's out. I want to try new restaurants. I'm constantly um, going to networking events. And, you know, I just, I want to be a part of everything. I can't get enough of life. Do you stay in touch with any of the uh, figure skating crew? You know, I'm very close with Evan. Uh, Evan Lysacek, he was at my wedding. He's working for Vera Wang now. And we kind of do monthly dinners and catch up. Um, nice. Is he? Is he work? So he's working in fashion now. Yeah, he he's very interested in like luxury brand um, area, and he's doing so much for Vera now. He's like running three departments. Um, so he's uh, Evan got is a running crazy schedule. three departments for Vera Wang. He's doing a lot. Wow. Like Evan is, <laughs> and if you knew him as an athlete, he's bringing that same vigor and intensity to um, you know his next career. So we kind of have we've known each other for twenty years. So to see the growth. Um, amongst us and both ending up in New York. I kind of pulled him out here. I was like, Kevin, you have to leave LA. There's, there's more for you here. Now you were a political science major in college. Is that degree something, is that 
you know, when you mentioned what you want to do now, is politics a part of that? I would say political, you know, within political science, I love political theory and philosophy and, um, you know, international relations. So I'm very much, you know, my, my iPad is um, the Economist um, Council on Foreign, or Foreign Affairs. And, and I love that kind of reading and understanding the world and understanding how, um, how things are shifting with, with growth rates and demographics and what that might mean. Um, but less, less so in like kind of the hardcore, you know, what we're going through with the election. It's, yeah, uh, what do you think about it with a political science major looking at this election? It's pretty unprecedented. I feel like it's, it's a little disappointing that the country is in the state that it's in. Um, I think if you see what's happened with the rise of the conservative right since the 70s, like you understand why the mass of voters are so upset that we kind of got to this position. Um, but, you know, ultimately I have to say that I'm with her and, you know, I'm going to have to go with someone that um, has the experience, that's competent, that's been in the political realm for her entire career and in public service. So I, I don't think that's a difficult decision. Do you think it seems like more athletes now are sort of speaking out politically? Like when I was going to my Olympic Games, it was sort of an expectation, like we would not talk about politics. And when political questions came up, it was sort of like, I'm just excited to... Yeah, exactly. I'm just excited to represent our country at the games. And I feel Why like do you think there's more athletes now? Like LeBron James, I think, endorsed Hillary of what's happening with Colin Kaepernick. Just a lot more, it seems like, activism amongst athletes. I think with the Black Lives Matter and kind of the state of the country and the, the polarization of, amongst different groups has just brought it to the forefront. So you can't really ignore it anymore. You kind of have to have some kind of opinion. Um, and... And I think even, you know, when we were competing, especially for the girls, at least guys can be like, I want to win, and I'm ready, and I'm the best. Like, we were supposed to just say that we're going to try our best, and, you know, we hope we look nice in our dress, and, like, it's just a dream to be here, and you're supposed to be so nice. Like, girls just need to be nice. Um, but I think it's refreshing for people to speak their mind, um, to, to share their opinion, how they feel about being a citizen, how they feel about their leadership, but it's, it is difficult. I posted one um, Instagram post kind of saying, can you imagine um, a woman running that was Donald Trump in the sense that had um, five kids, or sorry, three kids with five and five different relationships, cheated on their spouse, no political experience, um, multiple bankruptcies. Can you imagine a woman with that background running for president and just saying how overqualified women have to be to compete for the same roles that men have. And I just, so I posted that and I got slammed, you know, it's just, yep. and it's, it, you have to have tough skin in this world with what people are posting on Twitter and all these, um, the, you know, people are just there to attack you behind the, by, behind their computer. So that's a little rough. I don't know. I think you've got the political uh, gene in you. Maybe we're going to see you running for office. A little bit. I've got to get my uh, skin a little bit tougher. I yes. Mean, after being out of the spotlight for a while, you, f you think you're fine and you're like a normal person because you're not used to the criticism anymore. Um, I think when you're an athlete and you compete every day and you're used to people kind of saying like, oh, she'll never do it or her jumps aren't strong or like, I don't believe in her. You kind of just, that's always background. You're used to having haters. But then all of a sudden, I'm just like a normal person saying vote for Hillary, and the haters come back, and I'm just like, what did I do? Like, I didn't do anything. Um, so it's, you know, you have to have tough skin to be in the public Do you think eye. it would be tougher being an Olympian now with so much social media and so much access? Like, you won your silver in 2008, in 2006. Do you think yeah. now, like you mentioned just some of the criticism when you were an athlete, but is it, is it that much easier just to criticize folks and more people feel like they just can't, can insult you? I think it's like a blessing and a curse, and I think you know the best thing you can do if you're in the public eye is just like don't read what people are saying about you, because it can be it's brutal. You know, it's it can be absolutely devastating. Um, but you know, at the same time, the people that are coming of age now in the spotlight, um, they can build their brand and their presence, and you know, even fight for their causes by having these um, you know social media sites and building a following, which you know, I think our generation missed a little bit because I was, you know, four years out of my Olympics when Twitter was big. And um, so it's, you know, it's a blessing and a curse. Um, I was doing a report and about social media and George Clooney had the best quote. You know, there's a lot of big movie stars that aren't on social media. He's like, if, 
if Twitter followers meant acting talent, um, then Kim Kardashian would be Meryl Streep, yeah. but she's not. And so it's just, it's a very interesting way, and I think in a world where there's, you just plugged into every device all the time, there is, it is nice to, to have some distance um, and not be completely connected. I wanna ask you some Olympic questions. Uh, so I don't know how much you followed the Russian doping scandal with Sochi and with <laughs> then leading obviously into Rio. What was your reaction? Was it like, oh, yeah, this is what was going on the whole time? Was there anything that surprised you about it? It, it really didn't surprise me. Maybe just that it was finally public that it did. I remember. Were you surprised it was like the government like behind it? I always, I always thought it was like in each sport. Like but to Russia's see it was watching. like a whole, yeah. Um. <laughs> Putin's watching and hacking your email right now. Um, but, you know, I competed and I trained with Alexei Yagudin. And, you know, once he left Mission and left Russia and was training in the U.S., he was saying, like, you know, not to name names, but he's like, certain athletes, my competitors, like, they're on stuff. Like, they, get, they take certain things before they compete that helps them with their balance and with these things. And then they know exactly how much to take and what to drink so it's out of their system. And that's what I had heard when I was, you know, I was just like 16 and competing and, you know, we don't have that in the U.S. Um, and so then when it kind of came out, you know, I think I heard it always like hushed and like as rumors, but now that to see it like big and in the press and see the track team barred, it's like, whoa, okay, this, it's a real thing now and everyone knows about it. It's not kind of just some people know. Do you think we're going to be able to clean up the sport, or is it just unfortunate reality of the Olympics is that some countries are going to try to cheat, some athletes are going to try to cheat? You know, I think it's kind of like the same can be said about the world. Like some people are going to try to cheat, and that's um, people have different opportunity costs. People come from different situations. They're raised with different understandings of what's right and a, what's right at what expense. Like for some people, winning at any cost is fine. Um, so I think you're going to always have instances of that, and it's really important um, for the USOC to provide extra resources to crack down on it so that the athletes that would never do that are really competing in an even playing field. So it's 10 years since you won your uh, medal. So old. What is it? What is that? I said I'm so old. I can't you're so, believe You're I'm not so old. old. You look the same. You look the same. Um, what do you miss about being an athlete? Maybe that's less obvious and... What things do you not miss? I miss the absolute sense of clarity and purpose. You wake up, you know what you're doing, and you know where you're going for the next four years, or maybe the next eight years, the Olympic Games you're planning to be at. You know when you're going to be touring, when you're going to take your one-week vacation, and then when you're going to like dedicate your summer to getting back in shape. And you know you wake up injured and intimidated and and you'd get through the end of your day and you would feel so amazing. There'd be such this high that you just, I can't even describe when you're driving home at the end of the day after going to the track and skating for four hours and defrosting and hurting, but you did it. Like you put in your day and that feeling, I miss that feeling. Um, I feel like it's very hard in the normal world to find that sense of gratification and clarity of purpose. Um, what I don't miss um, is how insular and like how tiny my world was. I'm a very curious person. Um, and the, you know, having to do the same thing day in and day out, not being able to really have friends, being able to travel, um, not getting to go to, to school and to college, um, that was difficult for me. So that's why, again, I'm making up for it now. Um, but it's, you know, it's very much a trade-off, I guess, for athletes, the one thing, it's easy, you, you get phased out. <laughs> you're, you're too old to compete, so it's not really a choice. And you can, I, I guess I can look back and be grateful for the, that clarity of focus that I had and that commitment, and then know that that opportunity is no longer there for me, and now it's just exploring, exploring, exploring. Awesome, well, I think we have some audience questions, and uh, we'll see. Oh, we got an LA Dodgers fan here. Oh, I don't know how I know that, but... Uh, <laughs> Some way thank I you. know thanks it. For, thanks for the observation. Hey, <laughs> Sasha, good, thank you for being here. So uh, what, what uh, advice would you give to uh, future freak, freak skating people uh, that are trying to do what you do? And I, I was a uh, uh, process for you uh, trying to freak skate when you, when you started, when you first started out. 
advice. And you started as a gymnast, did you not? I did. I was in gymnastics um, first, and then I went to my friend's skating um, birthday party and fell in love with the speed and gliding. Um, so advice that I would give is that, you know, ice is hard, but you slide generally, so that's it's not too bad when you're learning tricks, but you have to you have to love it, and you have to know there's going to be bad days, and you know, never quit on a bad day. And regardless of if you end up at the Olympic Games or just a local competition or don't compete at all, if you choose to, how you apply yourself and the personal challenges you overcome when you try to skate, um, you grow so much as a person. Um, so, like, I'm always, the wonder of sports is amazing, like, how it builds character um, and skills that you can really take to any part of your life. And um, you were, the second part was you asked how I started? Uh, it was certainly difficult, um, but I was just absolutely set. My mind was set upon learning these jumps, and I started a little bit late. I would see these younger girls skating around doing tricks that I couldn't do yet. And I was just like, Mom, you have to take me every day. Like, you have to, the ice time's over. Like, I need to go to that rink. I, I need to learn this. And then as soon as I saw my first Olympics, I didn't even know what the Olympics was, so I was like 10. It's like, okay, now this is what I have to do. So I've always been very goal-oriented and very intense. And so with skating, I found, I found a direction to apply that. Um, so it was very magnetic for me. All right, over here. Hey, Sasha, thanks for being here. So I want to get back to the topic of education. I know earlier in the interview you said you had an interest in finance, and then you shifted to media and journalism. How and why did that shift happen for you? So when I was still skating and touring, um, I would wake up in the morning, and I would turn on either Bloomberg or CNBC, I would, you know, watch the futures, see where the market would open, like read earnings, um, and I loved it. But I, I think I loved it from afar, and you know, I admired people like Warren Buffett. Um, and I think when I came to New York and kind of saw the intricacies and and like the realities, and not romanticizing finance, and then working a summer in um, Long Only at Morgan Stanley, I realized like, okay. You know, I, I don't want to spend my life like analyzing this one stock and looking back at the last 10 years of their quarterly P&L and just like getting buried in the minutia. I'm like, like I want to change the world. Like I want to do something more inspirational. I want to like, change the world. Um, and then I think I just political science, um, which was my major, um, was just fascinating to me because again, my world was always so small and understanding the nuances of political strategy and understanding the history of how nations developed and the tensions and um, like current diplomatic relations they had was, was fascinating. Um, even if you never used it, it helps you read a newspaper and you understand the world that you live in. And I think especially as, um, you know, with globalization and networks bringing everyone closer together, it just, it seemed like an important skill. And, um, you know, it's, it's still something that's evolving, and I'm trying to figure out exactly where I want to be in that space. Um, but I think, for me, that, that grabbed me in a way that, that finance didn't. All right, Juan, we got one more right here. How are you doing? I'm good. Hi. 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 Um, I really love your like, inspiring story and your athletic experience. And I'm curious about, like, what do you think your athletic experience benefit on your current job and even your... Uh, in the, like your future career plan? Sorry, can you, which kind of experience? Athletic experience. You're athletic oh, athletic to your current job. Um, I think you're used to failure. Um, when you're an athlete, you're used to, you know, for two years struggling to learn or to master a move. Um, so you're used to things not coming easy. Um, but you are, which makes it a little more difficult, you are expecting purpose. And sometimes when you're starting at your first job and you, you know it's not the most important thing in the world, it's hard to latch on to that same sense of purpose you had in sport that was just like rocket fuel and you could go, go, go. Um, but I think what's the most helpful in applying to work in the real world is just you're like, we're dreamers, you know? Um, maybe that's bad because we're not super practical. 
Um, we're like, okay, we, you know, we want to be Olympic medalists. Like, this is what we're going to do. And people are like, okay, well, what are you going to really do? Um, so I think I apply that now to my next career goals. And I have huge ambitions. And I'm willing to work, work, work. Um, so I think just patience and just being very dogmatic about what's important to you. I think you can find that rocket fuel feeling, though, in the workplace. I think that's going to be what yes. you find. Yes, when, when, you, when you find the right fit, yeah. right? When you find where you belong, and then I feel like I've got this tank of rocket fuel, and I'm just like... Looking where to send just it. like, where, where, <laughs> where? But um, exactly. Awesome. Well, we're going to be watching, and we're going to be excited to see you take your rocket fuel and uh, blast into your career now that you're a graduate. Yes, I am university. a graduate. So we want to thank you so much for coming to AOL Build, zig.com. Yes, zig.com is where I'm currently working. Um, we'd love your feedback. Download the app at zig.com. And it's really cool. We're, um, we're really making a name in the media business that's fragmenting and bringing everything you want to one place. So I'd love your feedback. Did we talk about what you were doing now? I think so. I think we did. All right. We did. Sasha Cohen, everyone, Olympic silver medalist, <laughs> Columbia graduate. What else? Newly married. She's awesome. Thank you for coming on.